Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Angie Kazi, and I am Vice Chair of the City Club New Leaders, an initiative that has enabled younger professionals to become part of Cleveland's civic discourse. The New Leaders plan engaging programs consistent with the mission of the City Club. The City Club is the longest running continuous free speech forum in the country. Its mission is to inform, educate, and inspire citizens by presenting significant ideas and providing opportunities for dialogue. While the City Club is known for its tradition of debate and discussion, membership here is an excellent way to enhance your professional experience in Cleveland. And now, in the City Club tradition of encouraging new ideas and a free exchange of thought, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Susan Taves Zellman. Dr. Susan Taves Zellman, who has been with the Ohio Department of Education since 1999, announced on May 28th that she will step down as Superintendent of Public Instruction when a new superintendent is hired and will stay on until December 1st through the transition. She will speak on where Ohio public schools have been, where they are now, and where they will be going. In her role as the state's top educational official, she has framed policy, advanced systematic reform, and supervised the implementation of policies and programs. Ohio is ranked seventh in the nation in an Education Week's 2008 Quality Counts Report, receiving an A for its current system of standards, assessments, and accountability. And over the past seven years, the average of student scores on state tests increased by more than 19 points. Dr. Zalman's beliefs in the importance of early learning, school readiness, providing a safe learning environment for all students, and ensuring that students in schools have the tools they need to learn and teach have led to a number of other significant accomplishments throughout her tenure, each of which underscores her commitment to those areas. Dr. Zalman has received numerous awards and honorary doctoral degrees and holds a doctorate in education from the University of Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcome, welcoming to the City Club of Cleveland, Dr. Susan Tave Zalman. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Angie. It's great to be in Cleveland and a real honor to speak at this very distinguished forum. I understand that the City Club has hosted not only six U.S. Presidents, a number of Supreme Court Justices, Secretaries of State, Secretaries of Education, but also such luminaries as Rosa Parks, Henry Louis Gates, W.E.B. Du Bois, and of course, Jane Fonda. In fact, not of that I'm really directly competing with Jane, but I will be unveiling my own videos here later and will be available on sale in the lobby after lunch. <laughs> Confidentially, Jane and I are predicting a major comeback for leotards and leg warmers. <laughs> But in all seriousness, a prior speaker at this wonderful forum, Miriam Wright Edelman, the founder and the president of the Children's Defense Fund, once said, if we don't stand up for children, we don't stand for much. Ohio has a long history of standing up for children and of a concern for improving our state's educational system. So, while my remarks today are entitled Innovations in Education 2008 and Beyond, in order to talk about where we're going, we first must talk about where we've been and where we are today. Even as the Connecticut Western Reserve was being surveyed by Moses Cleveland over 200 years ago, education was considered a cornerstone to the early pioneer society. Out of every six mile square township, 500 acres in these townships were dedicated to the support of our schools. The benefit of looking back in history is to give us a perspective and an opportunity to learn from it. You might find it surprising, but 10 years ago, Ohio had no consistent standards for academic achievement for its students. 
So in the past, students from Shaker Heights, from Cleveland Metropolitan School District, or Inventor Schools in Port um, Portage County had vastly different curricula. So what students often learn often depended on their zip code. Ten years ago, Ohio's statewide assessment system was not aligned to measure whether students were learning the same curriculum or how well they were achieving at, as they were moving from grade to grade. Ten years ago, there was no way to break down our data to see how well different groups of students were doing, such as the disabled or economically disadvantaged. Hence, it's really not surprising that 10 years ago, Ohio's education system was stuck in the middle of the pack on state education is, uh, indicators. Today, things look quite different. Today, we have standards in every subject area from preschool to high school. Today, achievement tests measure whether students are learning and improving over time. Today, we know we are closing achievement gaps because we are able to track and measure student groups. And this data gives our educational leaders information to improve the quality of their instruction. While 10 years ago there was very little data to indicate how schools and districts were performing, today Ohio is a nationally recognized leader in its data and, account and accountability systems. With the help of Ohio's businesses, educators, and policy leaders, we are raising expectations, we are building the capacity of the system to meet these expectations, and we are improving results by aligning the appropriate incentives. The results of this strategy are clear. Ohio is now ranked seventh in the nation on the 19, um, 2008 Quality Counts Report released by Education Week, up from the middle of the pact in 1999. The 2008 report card gives Ohio an A in our standards, assessments, and accountability systems. Today, 80% of Ohio's 613 districts are rated excellent or effective. In 2,069 districts were in academic emergency, including 18 of Ohio's 21 urban districts. Today, there are none in academic emergency. State's res results show that students' average scores have increased almost 20 points over the past eight years. National results show Ohio's high school students continue to outperform the nation on the ACT, the SAT, and the National Assessment of Educational Progress. On the world stage, Ohio education system is making its mark. The Golden Sachs Foundation recently named Ohio uh, as the winner of the most prestigious prize in excellence in um, international education. And we were the first state to internationally benchmark our standards against the best in the world. We have other international collaborative partnerships, including thanks from the Jennings Foundation, who is here today, which allows us to partnership with Sesame Street. And we're the first um, state in the country that has a Chinese multimedia curriculum for our public school preschoolers. And it's being field tested here in Cleveland Heights, University Heights. Our vision is to develop a world-class educational system in Ohio, and um, we are very, very grateful that over the years, over eight years, we received an additional $150 million from um, the federal government, corporate, and private foundations, both in, in Ohio and nationally. This includes a recent award of $1.8 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Hewlett Packard Foundation to explore the best ways to assess student skills and knowledge in addition to our standardized testing program. Even in the area of school funding, we have made progress. But as I will say later, we need much more. <laughs> 